tal? Eh, Juan prometió que iba a decir un montón de cosas que no sé si voy a decir, pero bueno. F11, ¿dijiste? Muy bien. Eh, bueno, la, la idea... No. Sorry. I don't know where I am. Uh, the, the idea of the talk is uh, a bit to share with you all the software we do uh, so we can do satellites. Then we don't use much small talk, sadly. We use quiz a lot, and it proved to be good. We hire people that are experts in image processing who only program in OpenCL and, and maybe Python a bit, and now they are doing quiz. Very happy. So we are contributing to the community, I guess. <laughs> and, um, but there, there are a lot more things than we do. And I want to share with you and have in mind this question, and it's my, what I want to try to find out is what are other spaces where we could use a small talk. It's not like we're going to run out and do it, because we truly decide what language to do in the wrong way, I believe, and it's depending on what people do we have. And we first choose the right people and then find out what they can do. Most people can learn a language, I agree, but they usually feel more comfortable in one particular one. So, one thing we have is the software that runs in space. Two big things, in space, in the ground. In space, we have many things. Uh, the platform runs on our own hardware. We have developed sort of a modular hardware platform based on an ARM processor. And we cut and paste the block into many different boards. And we have in the satellite, I believe, uh, five different boards, totaling eight boards, because many are repeated. All run free RTOS. It's a real-time operating system on top of ARM. That we program in C. And a bit, only a little bit of assembly for the bootloader. From there, we do the power control of the satellite to monitor the battery life, the charge from the solar panels. We do the thermal control to see whether it's cold and we need to turn on heaters or whether it's too hot and we need to um, turn off things. Uh, we monitor whether everything's working or not. Uh, sorry. We control the attitude of the satellite and it's not the altitude. The altitude does not change much. The attitude is where the satellite is pointing, and that's very important for taking pictures, and also for propulsion. Uh, we sense the attitude, and we act on it. We change it. Uh, gyroscopes and magnetometers, sun sensors are the sensors, and uh, magnet torquers and, and reaction wheels, motors, are the actuators, pretty much. Uh, we also have the low bit radios implemented over this operating system in C. Um, if you're bored, you can ask me questions anytime. Uh, we also have another part of what we call the platform. The platform is what's needed for the satellite to survive. We have part of it implemented on top of a Linux system. It does not require real time, so we gain freedom on the development environment. Uh, it's still not small talk here, mostly Python and only a bit of C when we need uh, a bit more speed. Uh, from the Linux, we do more complex attitude modes like following a spot in the Earth while the satellite advances or following patterns in the Earth. We execute a mission, that means uh, we decide there when to take a picture from where and what to do with it, and turn on other things from the satellite and turn it off. We do housekeeping. We maintain a database of all the telemetry. That's the vital signs of the satellite. We store it in the Linuxes, and we batch download it when the satellite goes over a ground station. 
So we try to have a sort of a complete view of the, of the health of the satellite through the, through the orbit, even if it's not on top of a ground station. You can only communicate to the satellite when it's on top of a, an antenna. So we soar and then download more stuff. And it also triggers alarms and events that based on the telemetry. And from the Linux, we also do file transfers and streaming of a few data. File transfer in, in both directions, because uh, we do software updates into the satellite uh, through the Linuxes. Then we also have... Yes, we do, actually. We, we do, we have a continuous integration system. Yes. We, we have a continuous integration system on the, on the development environment. I'm going to talk a bit about it. And we plan on doing it through into the satellite. Today, we get to building the, the, the deployable upgrades automatically. And they are scheduled to, to be updated, updated, uploaded into the satellite, but we manually test them into the model we have in the ground. Because if we lose the satellite, it's a one-way function, like there is no way back. So on the payload, we have uh, also a low, uh, low-level programming whatever, on an FPGA and an ARM. Uh, from there, we do, we do very low-level things, like control the camera interface, uh, gr do the frame grabbing. This is uh, the, the sensor on the camera has very delicate timing issues, so we, we have to do it very quick and very close to the sensor. We do that on an FPGA. Uh, from there, the same FPGA has an ARM processor inside, and we control this very precise timing from the from a free RTOS actually running on the arm inside the FPGI. We have a focus control that we do for there from there, auto exposure. We could do basic image, image processing and tag the images with a very precise timestamp so we can later correlate it to the place where the satellite was uh, at the time of taking the image. Uh, I have there. Two real examples of images. I added the white dots there. That's on the top image. But that's how a frame comes out of the sensor. It's all noisy with dots that you don't want to see because the, usually the camera, every camera has dead dots and hot pixels, dead pixels, hot pixels, unbiased pixels. Is The amplification of the, each pixel or groups of pixels is different. So you have to do some sort of very low, what we call image cooking to get a nicer image like, like the one down there. So we're not sure where we're going to do that. We, we might want to push it as low as we can into the ARM process or even the FPGA for a speed up. Because we, want to, we, we believe we can do this image processing Juan was talking about in real time. We're not sure. We have, we're not taking images through the whole orbit, so we have some dead time where we can... Uh, do processing while we're not taking images. So we have a buffer there, but we, wa we want to, to your question, we want to do it in real time. And we believe it's possible. And then going a bit higher into the chain, we have other Linux, and uh, this runs on a pretty standard AMD64 with a GPU. It's not really standard. It's a bit more rugged, ruggedized, larger temperature ranges. Um, a bit more tolerant to radiation than normal AMDs, but pretty much the same. Uh, we've got uh, desktop computers completely uh, compatible with it. So in there, we do fine orbit prediction, and this and is a, li a little bit more number crunching, so we do it in this more powerful computer. We do now the image cooking where we're doing it there, what I just talked. We do the spectral reconstruction of the images because we don't take red, green, and blue at the same time. So we have to merge. As, as Juan was merging, uh, say he's merging different images to complete a stripe, we have to do more merging than that, like the different colors into a single uh, RGB image. Um, we also do the stripe reconstruction, as Juan was talking. 
like it's shown there, um, ge geometric corrections like the ortho rectification, and we also plan to do the modulation for the software defined radio for the high bit rate communications. That's uh, we are programming it uh, in a sort of an open source framework called uh, GNU Radio Companion. We have to do a bit more, a bit primitives. The framework is not enough. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about all the software we do, not we use, that we do. Uh, if, I don't mean we do the whole thing on, on the GNU SDR environment, but we have to code to get the code working for us. Uh, and this is all in space, inside the satellite. But there's a lot more than that. We do a lot more things in the ground. For example, during the software development, we do continuous integration and testing. We do unit testing, uh, integration testing, and we also we actually also download or upload this, the software into the hardware and test it into the hardware, not only on simulated um, platforms. Actual with the actual sensors, with the actual hardware. Uh, we also do a lot more things during the development. We do physics simulation. For the attitude control guys, they program a lot in MATLAB to simulate uh, the orbital mechanics. And we also do a bit of coding to simulate the optics of the, of the, of the camera, of the satellite. Um, and a lot more things. Uh, we simulate also the propulsion to see if it's going to explode or not. It's not, if you were wondering. And, um, I don't know, many, many other things. Then, also in ground, we have a hardware development life cycle, as, not as clean as the software one, but we are, we're working on it because we design most of our hardware. It's, uh, we, we do all this because we want to do very cheap satellites, and anything you can buy out there for a satellite is very expensive. So, we have no other way of doing it. Uh, other than doing it ourselves. So we use a lot of software while we test the prototypes of the hardware. It's a software expressly done to test something. We do some software to accept the units. Once the, the development is done, we, for example, need four of these in a satellite. Uh, those are sun sensors, the red things. Um, so we bring them in, we test whether they work or not, uh, if they don't, we discard or try to figure out why, then we characterize them because they have uh, sun sensors, uh, light sensors, whose response is different, so we have to characterize each sensor. Um, and then we also do, on the right, bottom right, is the motors I talked before that we use for moving the satellite. Uh, we also do that, we spin up the motors and see how much power they consume, um, try to choose the best. Um, and then, during the integration phase, integration is when we put together the parts to actually build a satellite, or the subsystems of the satellite. We have a development uh, environment where we, we try to do it in phases, so we are actually right now integrating the subsystems for the two satellites that we're going to launch by the end of April. Um, so we first sort of build boxes, and then we integrate the boxes into the satellite. So, for example, down there, there are, you see it's kind of a box, but it's three gyroscopic sensors that need to be at 90 degrees, or we need to precisely know at what degrees they are. So we have to do software to test and characterize that. And then up there, that's the, the propulsion tanks for the propellant. And the brown things are the heaters. And we wrote software to see whether the heaters were transferring as much heat as we need to the tanks. And we write some software for that. Um, actually, I, know, I don't know, Juan, if you are surprised, but when I wrote this, I was surprised of how much software we're doing. <laughs> we, we have software to verify that all the cables are correct when we plug things that 
that's integration testing. When we have parts and we integrate them, we run software to see if the cables are correct or not. And I don't know. Then um, we we do some environmental testings, and we we have tests to see whether the 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 tests are successful or not. Pretty much whether the satellite or the part broke or not. So we, for example, shake the satellite because the launch is very. Um, oh. All right, that's that's the shaker where we're gonna put the satellite, uh, and that's how the satellite is gonna move. The the launch, if you can imagine the the noise of, of a launch, that's all movement. So it's very stressing for the satellite. So we test the satellite to see if it's gonna break, and through the test we we stop to see if everything's working. We we use the unit test that we run for the software and the integration test that we run for the software and the test that we run for the cable testing and the integration test, and we pretty much reuse lots of the tests we wrote for other parts. But some things are different, like mechanical stability tests. Uh, for example, if the camera moved during the vibration, that's only for this. Uh, then, also in the ground, we do some research. For example, down there, that's a graph of the power sur power regulator that should be do should be providing five volts continuously but if you see through the end it falls down that's inside a radiation chamber and there we were testing how this part that we chose was uh, good for the space environment radiation is a uh, uh, a risk for electronics and it was not. We discarded this one. So we choose components by testing them uh, for some things. Uh, this is a simulated, I think it's simulated three years uh, life of the component in orbit, of course, accelerated. Uh, and it, it wouldn't hold more than two years. Then it falls down. So this one we cannot use. And at the top, there is some software we are using... Uh, this one is the software that we are using, but to use it we need to um, put the images in a special format. These are images that are quite complex. It's not like three color images. It's a hundred different color images. So it's, it's what we want to see and what you can see from the satellite with these kind of images is, for example, tell whether a field has uh, weed or soy, or whatever, be, because of the different color. Color, actually, the spectral uh, profile of the light. Uh, so we, we we write software so we can do our research and test and choose things. Um, yeah, and we do some. We do the software that operates the antennas. Down there, move them to point to the satellite. And you can't see up there, but there is a bunch of graphs. And that's uh, the software we use uh, to see the telemetry, the health information from the satellite. And try to see whether it's okay, or if it's cold, or if the batteries are running out, or whatever. Uh, and we do, we call low-level mission operations to the group of people who does, who takes care of the satellite, knows the satellite, knows its health, knows if it has fever or whatever, and they care about the software updates and and they get sort of we need a, an image from there and they upload the comments to that, and then they take care of downloading the data and storing it, and then we do some higher level mission operation and it's for example on the top. Suppose we wanted to take images with a single satellite of the regions in yellow, that's Argentina, Brazil, a part of the United States, and one of the countries very far away. And, um, and you, you need to know when you, you can take the, the images. So this is 
uh, an scheduling problem. And it's hard to do, especially uh, when we're going to have 300 satellites in the air. So we need to actually work on these tools. Right now we are learning, doing it by hand, uh, writing a bit of software to help us understand the problem, and slowly growing. Uh, but then in the ground we're going to do more image processing, uh, things, especially we need to do things in the ground when we need to correlate data from different satellites. All right. So, for example, comparing two images for doing a stereo, a stereographic reconstruction of 3D in the ground or tracking the changes, how a city evolves or a field evolves, uh, vectorizing rows, um, and then we're going to do information analysis. We don't really want to offer raw images to the market. We want to offer information. Um, I think this is pretty much most all the software we do with this. Uh, the last part is actually delivery of the products. Uh, the two examples there, the first one is um, sort of Object detection from images, uh, pretty much in this one, is detecting the boundaries of fields automatically. It's not our application yet. We have a few prototypes of this for detecting cars, for example. Uh, but that's one direction we want to, to go. And then on the bottom, on the left, is what's called the false color image. The red is actually infrared, near infrared information put into the red uh, spectrum. So you can see the infrared part, which is important to know if the, for example, the plants are absorbing carbon dioxide, right? I believe. So this is one application we can do. And we want to deliver straight to the end user and actually also have an API and a framework uh, and actually sort of a cloud infrastructure, if you want to call it, where other people can run their own uh, data crunching algorithms. Um, so this is all the software we are doing or by the end that we need to do. Um, there are places where Smalltalk would be, we could push Smalltalk into those places to be uncomfortable, like real-time needs, or, or not. What, I would ask you, why would you do that? I know a few answers. Um, and there are other places where may, I think Smalltalk fits a bit more comfortable. Uh, and I have some ideas. You were asking if we expect to run this on the satellite. I secretly expect to run quiz on the satellite. And I think we will run it. Not sure if it's going to end forever there. But I'm sure we're going to run it. Because that's what we have today. And if the integration with OpenCL goes very well, as I believe could go, I, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't. Other than... Other than the only one that actually knows quiz and small talk and is programming in Satellogic is Juan today. Uh, which is not minimum, absolutely not. Um, but I think we, we can create a good framework that all the people can do. And we have, uh, for the previous satellite, we use a console all written in small talk that Tenpine did for us. And it was pretty good, and uh, we used it a lot, and it actually, I believe, it's among many, many others, but one of the reasons why we could actually do the previous satellite. Truth is that, though I love it, when we're, we are doing tools for developers, the developers need to have complete understanding of the tools, and they want to change the tools, and sadly, when they need to change the tools, they are not willing to invest time in learning how to change the tools. So slowly, the people started doing their own tools in Python because it's what they know by heart. And we, we sort of 
lost the previous console. Uh, I sometimes bring it up and use it and do some charts. But that's what happens to us. Yes, five minutes. And as you raise your hand, you have a question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, it's five minutes. All right, any other questions? Yes, or suggestions? Where is Quiznos? Is Where is? Quiz knows? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we, we, we thought, actually, on doing it. We don't need to boot it, actually. We could just use it on, on top of Linux. Yeah, I, I like to see that one. Other questions or suggestions? Or, mm, I don't, yeah? Is it possible to use a small tool for electronics? I think there's people there doing it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the, it is possible. There are many ways you could do it. Uh, we, we use it during the development cycle to monitor and command and test the devices, of course. And it is sort of possible to download, but it's, it's not today. Uh, I think what's closer to that, it's uh, eat, physical eaters, right? Yeah, why not? Uh, the guy there laughing. Should know better. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, if I see any space for more powerful data visualizations, especially, uh, sorry, uh, Rosa. Yes. Um, yes. Th there is. I think at least during a discovery phase. Where, where you are still learning, that's very powerful. Like for looking at the logs, looking at the data out of tests. Uh, and, and I think, yes, and uh, maybe also to hear the data, like uh, we saw earlier today. I think any, any, anything that could help you uh, understand what's going on when you don't know what's going on is good. Yes, absolutely. Later, for image processing, I don't, I don't think it's up to it yet. But maybe it could be made into it. Yes. So for a discovery phase, absolutely yes. Later for visualizing graphs, yes. But there are other solutions. Yeah. Other questions? That, that's a good one, actually. Yes. How many satellites do you have in orbit? Right now it's three. We launched the last one a year and a half ago, roughly, and it's going on pretty well. The previous two we sort of abandoned. They are still beeping. The first one is sort of autistic, always repeating the same. The second one is working, but the third one is more power, a lot more powerful. It has four cameras, and we are downloading images and doing software updates pretty much every week. Um, and it's very healthy. It's an experimentation platform, so we're not still providing services out of it. And we're going to launch two more in April, and four more by the end of 2016, and maybe four more at the beginning of 2017, and the plan is to, during 2017, to launch another 10 and keep growing. Yeah, it depends on how well the market goes for us. Yeah. Uh, and the other question is, <coughs> you have been talking about software, but how many, like, main disciplines you have to integrate, you have to put as such? We have uh, mechanical engineers, uh, Physics guys uh, specialize in optics. We have the attitude team that's mostly specialized in both uh, orbital mechanics and control systems. That's uh, in electronic engineers, they learn a lot about control theory. Uh, of course, software, uh, electronic engineers, uh, uh, managing the team. And the times, it's, it's like a clockwork to have all the pieces fall together at right, the right time. That's also part of it. Um, uh, image processing, of course. Um, hmm? Yeah, communications, telecommunication experts uh, who design the radios and the protocols. Um, Platform, yes, uh, a specialist in low-level programming. It's mostly electronic engineers, uh, 
became, who became programmers, and also system administrators but uh, that do system administration for the satellites. So it's kind of, we, we try to find very good system administrators to do that. Um, that's, I think. FPGA design and programming, yeah, programming. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, yeah. Martin. We, we launch from the cheapest, uh, and that's today Russia and China, by far. Next year, there are going to be a few try launches from small rockets that can launch 500 kilos into a low Earth orbit. That's where we are. Um, that, that might be an option, but it's four times the price difference to Europe and the States. So, Where? No, no, it's uh, Europe. There are a few actually coming up. Yes. And this. Is potential for satellites to talk to each other to coordinate their work? Absolutely. When we. <laughs> Absolutely, there is place when we have. There is a critical mass that we need to have in orbit so the satellites are close enough. To, to talk to each other, so we cannot do it yet, but we need to do that because we want to see the, time, the world in real time. So that means communicating to one satellite and downloading images or video from another satellite. So yes. Is small to good for that? I don't know. Is it today used for distributed computing much? Is it good for that? It's, I think it's the same question. Uh, Delta... Intermittent, intermittent communications, but I think it is. I mean, I, mean, I think it, small tech is good for anything, for an operating system, for image processing, for, I don't know, I think it's good for anything, but uh, I don't think it's yet there. there I, I, I don't know of any good distributed computing platform in small tech. So, Yes? No, we haven't tried any real-time application with small tech. No, no. Uh, usually people say the garbage collector will break the real-timeliness. If, if Maybe you could stop it if it's just by intervals. Um, any other questions? Anybody wants to ask what's there? I just finished reading this book. And since this year I'm not talking about Privacy and um, what the world has become. I'm going to recommend you a very good book written, written by an excellent science fiction writer who usually writes about post-singularity, humanity, or on the edge. He now wrote not a science fiction novel, but a technological thriller uh, happening today. Uh, it's a creative commons free to download in text if you want, if you want to buy it. And it's in the audio book, it's pretty good too. And there is a second part. Okay, thank you. Thank you.